Hey everyone, welcome to the show. It's me, Chris. Um, I'm gonna play some Dusk because I feel like playing Dusk. Let's do the damn thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Dusk is, this is a game very much in the same vein as um, Quake. Uh, I like to say it's Quake meets Blood. Uh, it's a, one of those retro games. We're gonna start the campaign, the first campaign. Only one of the three campaigns are out uh, right now. This game is still in development. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the middle of the line difficulty because I do believe. Oh, New Blood presents a game by David Simpson and ha Andrew Hushschlutz. Dusk. I just kind of ruined that, didn't I? Oh well, I ruined everything. And this is one of those of a tree falls in the woods kind of thing, because so far no one is watching. So you can you can already see the resemblance to the old monolith game Blood right off the bat. I would have liked that opening cutscene though, about being buried in a shallow grave. Oh wait, no. He says hollow grave. That's what made it so funny. I fucked up my own running gag. In the very in the very beginning of Blood, uh, you betray the demon Churnborg. And he says, I leave you now buried in a hollow grave. I remember laughing at that because technically all graves are hollow. Unless you just kind of take a dead body and mush it down in there. Oh, hey, Mothleen's here. Hey, Moth. She says, knock, knock. Take that. Taste the pain, my hooded compadres. I like the setting of this game. Um, you're going to see a shift in tone if we get further on, but in the very beginning, it's this very kind of gothic American horror. It was a fucking jackalope. I guess I should say American gothic horror. Uh, me and Andy jokingly refer to this as Harvester, the first-person shooter. Something below is calling us. And I love the design of the enemies in this. Just the kind of Dr. Salazar wearing a hood and just some goddamn overalls and flannel. It, it kind of reminds me of one, you know, just your... Ooh, the door's damn, but something is rotten. Uh, Mothley wants to know why I'm fighting a KKK in a dungeon. Because you fight the KKK wherever you find them. In a dungeon, at Walmart, even at Thanksgiving, if you're in my family. Whoa, that joke was a little too close to home. But no, uh, they, uh, they, I will admit, yeah, they are the, these guys are a little KKK-ish. But I think they're more going for, like, the evil cultish. What the? But back to the Dr. Salazar looking guys. They look, you know, like evil hillbilly murder men but they also remind me of like if you're running a haunted house but like a neighborhood haunted house not like a corporate haunted house and you're like damn it i gotta get something to scare the kids while they come and get the candy um i'm just gonna put on overalls in a bag because i think conditionally we are um made to fear southern people and made to fear hillbillies in this country and that can either be because of film franchises like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or that could just be because people in the South are goddamn scary. Case in point, I grew up in a trailer park, and one day I happened upon a dead bird on the side of the road, and I was very young at the time, probably eight, nine-ish, and I was looking at this dead bird with curiosity, but also kind of sadness. You know, things like that affected me. I was a very sensitive kid, and I grew up to be a very sensitive adult. And this woman, uh, her name was Kayla, she was the she was the, the neighborhood crazy person. Drives up next to me very slowly. So slow I don't even see her coming. And she says something to me. She goes, hey, don't worry. It won't hurt you no more. But I can't say the same for me. And she drives off. That fucking scared the shit out of me. Especially because this is a woman who, hand to God, I one day saw walking her dog by hanging her arm out of her car door and holding onto the leash as she drove down uh, the road and when the dog wouldn't keep up with her she would just drag the dog behind her don't go to the south stay in the north it's terrible down here we elected ted cruz the literal zodiac killer 
Well, Mothlin points out the KKK is an evil cult. You got me there. They are. I don't know, but I... They, they are, but I don't like calling them a cult because... To me, cult has like this kind of like you gotta earn your cultness. To me, they're a bunch of fucking dumbass goofball idiot. I mean, they're trash. They they deserve to be in a trash can, and, mo and all cults deserve to be in a trash can as well. But let's put them in separate trash cans because I don't think the KKK have earned cult status. I don't want to put them up there with you know Jonestown or anything. They gotta they, they have I don't know. It's like, I hate them so much, I don't even want to dignify them by saying they're a cult. Which is really saying something. But for now, let's just call them a gaggle of morons. Who deserve to be put in a dumpster. And I put that guy in a dumpster. Ooh, spooky. Look at the scarecrow. See, that should be an enemy in the game. Right there. Like, these guys aren't half as spooky as that guy right there. Uh, Mothlin wants- Moth, you're the only person here. I feel like I keep saying Mothlin for the benefit- For the benefit of future people watching this, hopefully. Uh, she wants to know how the flu is going. Andy's still coughing pretty bad. I avoided it. I got a little sick, but I didn't get the full-on flu, no fever. Because I am made of sterner stuff. To quote... The Transformers animated film. To quote Optimus Prime, specifically. Then the next thing you know, I'm gonna get a fuck. I'm, I'm gonna get the fucking flu, and then Starscream is gonna put me on a space train and throw me out the side. But this is a perfect homage, and this does what other. See, I don't want to grab the power up just yet because I'm not really fighting that many tough enemies. But this does what a many uh, other games have tried to and failed to do, which is capture why old school first person shooters like your Dooms, like your Quakes, specifically Quake in this instance, um, and to a lesser extent Blood and Duke Nukem 3D, and to a much lesser extent Shadow Warrior, which I still think is garbage. But it captures what makes these games great, and that is it's fast as fuck and you don't reload. Like, I like Strafe. I need to get more into it. I also picked up Strafe during the Steam sale. Um, and I will probably stream some of that. But it annoys me that you have to reload your weapons. And it's like, come on. That's the one thing you don't want to do in a game like this. But this is fast. It's fun. Um, but it also fixes a lot of the problems I had with the original Quake. Which is, I get lost in video games very easily. That's something you will see in my original Blood Let's Play that I did five fucking years ago. By the way, the channel turned five. Um, but yeah, I get lost in those games easily. Quake especially was just normally waiting for Andy to beat the level, and then I just kind of coast on that. Because when you're playing co-op, whoever beats level first, you know, it goes to the next level for both players. This game, though, without holding your hand, there's a very good through line of where you need to go next. And I say that fully knowing... I will get lost as soon as I say that. So I've cursed myself twice. I'm going to get the flu and I'm going to get lost. I'm going to get lost and I'm going to get the flu. I'm going to get lost and someone's gonna be like, Chris, where are you? I'm like, I'm over here. Who said that? I'm going to turn a corner and it's the flu. Ooh, corn maze. It's a maze craze. It's a cornucopia, utopia. Drink a fruitopia, but corn's not a fruit, it's a vegetable. Put that on the table, if you're able. I always have my flashlight on. There's one of those creepy scarecrows again. Wish they were an enemy in the game. Oh my god, they are! Oh no! See, it's not I knew that they were. I've played this before. That was a, a ruse. It was a it was a joke. It was a jest. It was a lie for entertainment purposes. I apologize, I'll never do it again. Here's my apology video real quick for doing that to all you guys. Hey, I'm sorry I did that to all you guys. End of apology video. But, I don't know. It was much scarier the first time. The first time that was actually my honest reaction while playing this game. I was like, oh, whoa, those scarecrows are, are crazy looking. And I thought in the back of my head, they're going to come up fucking life and kill me, aren't they? And then, sure enough. Oh, little hitch. You get little hitches like that every now and then in this game, but I've only had it like happen once for, for playtime. 
I would love to see a game like this, or even this game do this, where you're sacrificing so much graphically, right? So it goes to show that maybe you would be able to spawn a shit ton of enemies on screen and just play a game like this where you're literally fighting thousands of people. That'd be so cool. There is a survival mode, and who knows, maybe when you get up in the higher levels of the survival mode, you will be fighting, not thousands probably, but maybe hundreds. Ooh, these... Before you get some of the better weapons. Oh, and just like all great first-person shooters, the bad guys can fight each other and damage each other. That's another thing this game gets right. And also it makes it so almost every projectile can be dodged. Let's see if anyone else is in the chat real quick. Uh, Andy is in the chat. Melody Burst. Uh, Paunch is in the chat. Paunch 65. Melody Burst says, if you throw Cappy at the Scarecrows, you can unlock some of those hidden power moons. I want to do a time trial. Get out of here, you jackalope. You jackalope. I felt like streaming tonight because I'm very hyper. I rarely get hyper anymore, which I realized I was diagnosed with uh, ADHD at a very young age, and I used to have very bad bouts of hyperactivity. Uh, that very negatively affect my schooling, but as I've gotten older and more melancholic in my old age, uh, my bouts of hyperactivity have kind of gone away, and I don't know, I guess maybe something I ate, but a real sugar rush tonight. Oh, maybe some of that panda chicken. Ooh, found a secret. But where's the door? So I felt like, hey, maybe I should actually stream and take advantage of this hyperactivity. Because the one good thing about being hyperactive, no dead air. That's what Jacksepticeye and, and all those other popular streamers do. Ones I don't want to name because I hate them. I don't mind Jacksepticeye. I mean, he's not my bag. Maybe he would be if I watched him, but uh, he's not morally repugnant as a very specific <laughs> video game player is who had a heated gaming moment in 2017. I know your trickery. Who are you trying to fool? Scarecrow, you ain't scaring me. I ain't no crow. I'm a pelican. The car. Pel I'm, I'm sorry, pelicans don't caca. See you, Harold. I hope you get that bag of skin someday. I was watching a uh, Steve from OSW stream earlier. I think it was yesterday. Oh, I exited the level. I guess I can talk more. And I'm very envious of him because he has this uncanny ability to like never miss something in the chat while playing a game. Whereas I have to like pause and like squint moving my sec- if I, that was a loud noise, I apologize. I opened a can of a cumin? I opened a can of a uh, Diet 7 Up and I moved my monitor closer to me. Two things that uh, sonically, we're probably not very pleasing. <sighs> Melody Burst is right. You can't piss on hospitality. Melody Burst normally would be in the room with me recording, but they are getting over the flu. Send them your well wishes. We going to church, everybody. Sometimes life can get you down with your face up in the dirt. But if you feel that left behind, you gotta get up and go to church. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, hallelujah. I probably fucked those lyrics up pretty bad. It's been a long time since I listened to, uh, Speaker Box. That's the name of it. I almost said Love Below. No, that was Andre's portion. It's a grieve. Oh my god, you can dig up. I didn't know this last time I played this. Alas, poor Yurik. He's gone! Yurik's in space, everybody! Oh no, he's coming in hot re-entry, no! Oh, thank God he made it. Whether tis nobler to make this three points! Into the woods. Ladies and, ger ladies and germs, Yurik is, oh no. I got the flu midway through that sentence. 
ladies and germs. Yurik is back. It's a magic trick. I am. What is his name? The mind freak guy. I almost said Chris Gaines, but I know that's not it. But fuck it. I'm the Chris Gaines of magic. Three points. You're out of here. I'm trying to play basketball with my son. Fucking racist. It's 2018. Someone buried some guts. That's good. Hmm, someone buried some coins. Put them on the eyes of the damned. So they can give it to... Sharon, the ferryman. I like to call him Sharon. Now, I could go through the front door like a chump, or I could show you my secret strat. Nope, never mind. It's not a secret strat. I can't make it. I don't have a good vertical leap. That's why Yurik was on the basketball team and not me. I'm the priest now. Um, dearly beloved, we are gathered here Three points. Foul. Three points. And it's out of here. Home run. I had a frog in my throat. And he had to do a little, uh... A little croaking. That's not what I meant to do. But they preferred to be cremated. That was in their last will and testament. And as a man of the cloth now, I have to... Uh, oh my god! Yet again, the Chris Gaines of magic. What is his name? The fucking mind freak guy. I keep wanting to say Chris... Chris Angel, that's his name. I'm the Chris Angel... of Chris Vaughn... streaming video games. York, you're coming with me, buddy. Uh, what's the name of that skull that follows you around in Planescape Torment? Is it Mort? Oh god, in come the rats! There we go. Take the Fuck off, rats! And now come the wolves! You, you rats like rancid? How do you like that rancid reference? How am I sounding, by the way? Oh, Mothley wants to know what the plot is. Well, to quote famed historian John Carmack, a plot in a video game is like a plot in a pornography. You expect one, but you don't really need one. The plot is to shoot things. The plot thickens, which is to say there are more things and people to shoot. Okay, blue door, but I got a red key. That sounds like it could be a song, right? I was at a blue door, but I picked up a red key. Ponch says, I'm coming in very clear. Thank you, Ponch. I could always depend on you. I actually have no air conditioning or heater on at the moment, so maybe that's why I'm, I'm getting a little boost in my clarity. Also, the microphone very close to my face, but don't worry. I, I turned the low-cut filter on so you're not getting a bass overload. I know some people really like that bassy. Count bassy orchestra. People really like that bassy... Um, effect when they listen to podcasts or live streams I hate it and I really regret that the latest phasmophobia I recorded without the low cut filter on and it has that bassy kind of effect because I thought oh hey people would like this bassy kind of effect oh my god I can barely listen to myself I sound so terrible I prefer I prefer clarity to, to presence oh that's where I came in from Take that, God! Here's what I think of y'all. House. Whose house? Run's house. Okay, 
Okay, I need the blue key. I got the red key. Kokonoi says, Oh God, what is this gross sewer water? It's sewer water. Whoa! That was not what I was expecting at all. That's a trap. That's not a door. It's... Come get some. They came and they got some. I mean, they actually took my advice. Good for them. There's something about this aesthetic that speaks to me. Like, we went through the retro pixel thing, and now I like that we're in the retro low... Low... Uh, oh, diamond. Low poly. That's what I'm looking for, the phrase. We're in the low polygonal... Um, kind of retro... Uh, phase like right now. I really enjoy that. Okay. So now I gotta backtrack and go through that blue door. Oh, and the scarecrow barn is open. I'm trying to think of a word. There was a word in my brain and it's gone now. Oh, is this a secret secret? Might be a shortcut. Secret secret. Guess who's back? Back again. This skull's back. He's my friend. Oh, no. Okay. He's, oh, no. I got him. I got him. You got to bring the skull with you to complete the level. Who said that? Get him. York. Get him. Oh, man. York talked him into fighting each other. He's got a silver tongue. Just like, um, Jebediah Springfield. He was buried with a silver tongue. Get him. Tag team. We did it, York. Whether tis nobler to kick ass. No, Heretic is another game. You're thinking of blood. This is more like blood. Heretic is like a fancy fantasy game. It's not fancy. I meant to say fantasy and I said fancy. <laughs> Damn it, what is the word I'm looking for? I was trying to say this game is low blank. It's not definition. Detail! Low detail. Detail was the word I'm trying to find. We're, we're, we're in the low detail, low polygonal kind of retro uh, phase right now and I really like that. I, I want more games to come out that look like this. That look like a butt but run super smooth. Because this was my age of gaming, you know? This is when I really came into promin prominence as a gamer. Oh no! Straight from a Guar song it's the intoxicator! The drunk alligator who pukes on you! <laughs> He's just like the fucking Yega monster! This, that, this, that, this, that, this. Oof. Oh, he's he's actually doing a number on me. I'm I'm being very cocky, but he's actually ripping into me pretty bad. Okay, I got some health. Come on. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna take you to the Tums Festival, brother. I got a shotgun full of Pepto. Here we go. My pet. You'll pay for that. Do you take debit? That was my cool action hero line. Asking him if he accepts debit. <laughs> oh man. I could also get drunk. I could whoa. Okay. You might not be able to tell, but I'm not doing that. I'm... Um, no, but I want more. I'm 21. Oh, still drunk. This is kind of making me want to yurt. 
And by that, I mean it makes me want to move out of my house and into a small hut in my front yard. I'm gonna yurt till I hurt. Where do I go now? It happened. I, I told you what happened. I would get lost. I flipped the switch. Where's the exit? Let's read the chat real quick. Uh, Mothly wants to know if there are other levels or is this just farm hell? It's mostly farm hell. That classic book written by Alan Moore, Farm Hell. And climb pretty good. Pretty good climber. Razzmatazz, where do I go from here? Maybe there's another switch in that room. Well, if you know where to go from here, send your answers to Old Pink, care of the funny farm. Hmm. Devil man, I flipped the switch. Let me out of here. Oh, of course, the tiny hole. Like I said, I promised you two things. One, I would get the flu. Two, I would get lost. Well, we've accomplished one. I've got zero secrets. This level is the Steamworks, so of course I'm going to happen upon some Japanese dating visual novels and then maybe have a fight with a asset flip zombie Minecraft game. Take that. Taste the pain. That was my obligatory Steamworks joke. Uh, I borrowed it from literally everyone who's probably played this game. But I got a double shotgun so I don't care. It's twice as powerful as a regular shotgun. But only half as powerful as a quadruple shotgun. Nope, that's where I came from. Hold on, I, I need that bar of soap. That level's dirty. Yes. Oh, fuck, I'm having a having one of my um mild fits at the moment. Just saw it coming when I when I get my hyperactive uh moments. It's normally followed by a a bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking here for? My brain is just dead. You guys are witnessing a brain die live on air. It's, you should feel very fortunate for that. Very rarely do you get to see someone's brain just slowly deteriorate until they are a mumbling mess. Live here on twitch.tv.com.net.org. No, by these bouts of a mild, uh, Nonverbal Tourette's, I guess, is the only way to really describe them. And they normally come after I become very hyper. I twitch really bad. It's normally um involuntary creaking of the neck kind of thing. People say I look kind of like an ostrich when I do it. I'm like kind of bobbing back and forth. Like a, there's a real chicken, real chicken movement you have to appreciate. 
I think I got a chicken infection. Oh, fuck off. Take that. How about some fire, Scarecrow? Oh, there's a quad damage thing right over here. Here's what the quad damage power-up does. It doesn't make you stronger. It makes you shoot a lot quicker, and you can just spank enemies with bullets. Take that. I kind of wish the game was always that fast, though. That's what uh, right clicking does. I'm trying to kill you with barrels. Let me kill you with the barrels. Come on. Don't be a dick. Be a dude. Okay, don't have the gun for those yet. This is what, when you hit the uh, reload button, since there's no reloading, your guns just kind of spin. It's really cool. Oh, I do have the machine gun. Whee! I like that one the best. That's the coolest one. You can't kill me. Water is safe. The water is safe. I called it. Oh shit, they agree. They agree the water is safe. Okay. I'm gonna read the chat. This is where this little impasse, real quick. Andy says, uh, or Melody Burst says, you do Twitch bad. Thanks. Melly Burst also says, Chris is the ostrich from that Scooby-Doo chase song. And Mothleen says, you two are right. This is FBS Harvester, except with probably less molestations. I think he didn't actually molest anyone. I think he went, I think he watched child porn. Is what the guy from... Mothleen is, um... Oh, wait, no, I think she's talking about the actual molestations in Harvester, not the people who made Harvester <laughs> who have gone on to be arrested for uh, possession of child pornography. And I should say it's the actor who played Steve, not the fine folks that made Harvester. The portals work. He is pleased. I hope the portals fucking work. Now if we can just construct some bridges. I hope the portals work. This game's been out since 2012. Woo. I'm turning into a baby child. Okay. It's a portal out of here. I got the blue key now. I like the little breadcrumb trail to always like lead you in the right direction in this game. It's always enemies, and I like that. It's like, do I need to backtrack here? Well, those guys are alive, and I swore that I killed everyone in this room before, so yeah. Probably do need to go through here. Yep, there it is, the blue door. Take that, get on your knees. I just let the problem take care of itself. Any secrets in here? Or eggs? Nope. Guess we leave the level. Kokonoi says, you always were a kidder, Chris. People want us to replay Harvester uh, once we get down the once we get done the next few rounds of Phasmophobia episodes, which are coming uh, very soon. As soon as everyone in the house is feeling better, we're going to start production on those again. 
Uh, can't say the same for Game Education. I know last year I kept talking about, oh, this year I'm going to bring Game Education up, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we filmed a lot of an episode and it didn't really work. It wasn't really funny, so I don't know what we're going to do with Game Education. It might still be on the back burner for a while until we figure out a way to make it funny. Because I don't want to release something that's not good. But people want us to replay Harvester, and now that I know that the actor in it is a uh, pedo, it kind of... I don't know. I, I can't say like I'm dead set against it, but it opens up an avenue uh, to a running joke that I don't think A, I'd be comfortable making, but B, I'd be able to avoid. <laughs> it's a, a meteor of black comedy uh, hurtling towards you that you cannot sidestep. And by black comedy, I, I of course mean as in like black humor, dark humor, gallows humor, Luke gallows humor, the kind of humor that he gets. Finally got a long range weapon and the rifle. That's just cool. Like just how many enemies they get on the screen. I miss that. So now there's just wide open levels with tons of enemies. Huge tracts of land. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, I feel like a toddler. I gotta get a box to get in the train. Some more soap. I wish the soap did something. Maybe you throw it at an enemy, they become good guys. They're like cavity creeps. They're actually just metaphorical for general uh, uncleanliness. Start a drinking game. Every time Chris has to pause mid-sentence and say, uh, uh, take a sip. See, I just did one for you. Oh, that's just a regular one. Hey, Harold. How you doing? Get out of here. Get out of here. You can get out of here. You also can get out of here. You can stay. We're friends. We're pals. We're going to remain friends to the rest of our... You betrayed me! Harold! He got his wish! He's a real boy, and he's a twin boy. Oh! This guy, he shot his own brother. He's not gonna be able to live with that. Even if he kills me, he's gonna probably take himself out the game. Triplets. The moment I turn my back, he's got... No. He learned his lesson. He went from being a quadruplet down to an only child. He ain't gonna fuck with me. I'm Chris Vaughn. You don't fuck with me. I'm Chris of Relo Last Save. As people call me. Yeah, 17 health. I'm doing mighty fine. Did I pick up another key? I picked up a yellow key, though it looks green because it's uh covered in my blood. Whoa, whoa, no fall damage. But a bunch of bad guys and I only have 17 health and I'm out of ammo. And they got me. Well, this has been fun. And it continues to be fun because I'm back. I refuse to die. Let's go ahead and try and uh, dust off this first campaign. Why don't we? Tonight. I don't know. Let's see how I'm feeling. Guys, I... My box! I needed that. I'm vertically challenged. And you callously come in here and destroy the only thing that lets me get a leg up around here. Thank you for that. Why don't you take the fucking ramps off of school, why don't you? You know? 
Why don't you fucking paint over handicapped parking spaces, you fucking monsters? You literal monsters? You very real, by the definition, monster? You are real monster? Monster mash looking motherfucker. Duh. Take that. Gonna give you my mama's recipe for cornbread, motherfucker. Who can forget this fun distraction? Oh, got two for right there. Okay, doing a little bit better, I think. I'm at 101 health. The wonderful 101 health. Let's check the chat real quick. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're saying Sod McFarlane in the chat, so I must have missed quite a bit of conversation going on. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to get some ammo from over here real quick. And some glowing candy corn, apparently. Okay. Take that. Just games like this make you feel like such a badass. These, these are the self-empowering moments in video game. It has nothing to do with... You narratively achieving something. It's just... Just... Feeling like a puma with a shotgun strapped to its head. You're moving so quickly. Jumping so far and, and just murking people. Take that, you pubic wig. You got murked. Okay. Is there anything over here? Other than you guys? What are you guys doing? You're in the woods. Backflips? That's cool. That was actually a front flip, but don't tell him. He's really proud of himself. Centon! Woo! It's like Jim Burry over here. People doing fucking flips. And I'm helping him. Okay, so this entire level is just one big roundabout uh, the magic roundabout with Dougal and, and company okay I needed that one bit of health okay don't judge me I needed it Chat's talking about their favorite farming simulators right now. Stardew Valley, Farm Simulator 2016. This is like those, but it has guns, and I appreciate that. What are your favorite... Question for the chat and question for the comment section uh, for people who play this game later. What are your favorite farms in video games? My answer might shock you. It's the farm from Fallout 2 where you can have sex with the farmer's daughter or son. And yes, you can have sex with the, the farmer's son or daughter regardless of your character's gender. And then you're forced to have a shotgun wedding with said sibling. Um, and then they join your party for the rest of the game. I fucking love that kind of shit in video games. I was a real bad person when I played Fallout 2, and I sold my husband, my gay husband, into slavery. <laughs> See, people are thinking I was i was saying I was a bad person because I was gay in, in Fallout 2. No, no, of course not. I was bad because I sold my husband into slavery. That, we can all agree on, is pretty bad. But I also really like the, 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 the fact that even if it was a homosexual relationship, the farmer 
who, yeah, I know it's post-apocalyptic, blah, 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 but the game is built on a 1950s kind of sentimentality. You think he'd be like, oh, no, son of mine. Instead, he's like, you better make my son an honest man. <laughs> Y'all better have a big gay wedding <laughs> or I'm going to kill you. Where'd that power up at? Take that. Oh, I'm shooting so fast. Done and dusted. And that boy's ass got busted. So that was cool. Nice little shooting gallery here. And 120 health. I'm doing much better this time. Gonna celebratorily uh, throw this rock. And there it goes. I am like... Heracles. I can just throw a rock and it just goes in the space. I'm like Ivanushka and uh, Jack Frost. Just throwing cudgels <laughs> up in the air and hope they come down next winter. If you've never seen the Miss Science Theater episode of Jack Frost, or the Jack Frost episode of Miss Science Theater, you remember that long running <laughs> show? Uh, first on cable access and then later picked up by Comedy Central and then the Sci-Fi Channel. It was uh, called Jack Frost and each episode of Snowman would watch a different show. He wouldn't comment on it because it was an uh, inanimate snowman. Um, which was a good way to see what was on TV that day. No, uh, the, the Jack Frost episode of Miss Science Theater is my second favorite episode. Both my favorite episodes of Miss Science Theater were actually in the later seasons on sci-fi uh, because my all-time favorite, I think my, my favorites go number one, Overdrive the Memory Bank. Number two, Jack Frost. Number three, Werewolf. Oh, you lied to me. And now I gotta fight the, the Scarecrow's moms because they have their fucking church hats on. Look at that lovely church hat. I'm doing like Tony Hawk gun tricks here. If Tony Hawk like really liked guns. I assume he does. Ah, <laughs> uh, sonically, how was that? How was that for you, sonically? You guys like that? Like some of that foley work you're hearing right now? <laughs> Brought to you by 7up. Diet Seven Up. I gotta, I gotta specify that it's Diet Seven Up. I'm really sticking to my diet uh, for 2018. I'm gonna lose 190 pounds. That's the plan. My other New Year's resolution: get lost in this video game, and I think I achieved that. Yellow door. Oh, if you leave the flashlight on too long, it goes off by itself. The track door is open. Okay. If you're watching this, whoa, never mind. I was going to say, if you're watching this and you're infuriated by how easy it is I get lost, I apologize, but now I found my way. These lovely cultists helped me find my way. Thank you. Let's get some ammo before I go down there. Ooh, let's get some treasure. Hell yeah. Gotta pick up the Chaos Emerald before I fight these fools. 
Gonna turn Super Saiyan God level supersonic on these motherfuckers. Take that. Which would just make him a blue Sonic the Hedgehog, so you wouldn't be able to tell. You really wouldn't. Okay. People in the chat and in the comment section in the future, what's your favorite mine level in a video game? Now, most people would say Donkey Kong Country. Of course, of course. And they'd be right to do so, because it's it's great. I love the mines in Donkey Kong Country, but I was always partial to the mines in Fallout 2. No, just kidding. Uh, the mines in Paper... Not Paper Mario. Uh, Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo has a really cool minecart sequence. You can hang out with those cool mole people. <laughs> oh, fuck you, pal. Laugh at me. You ruined my stream. My stream is ruined. And this person throwing bright green basketballs at me. Overhand style. It's not helping. Yeah, you two. Get out of here. Thanks for the red key. You at least give me stuff. Basketball scarecrow woman. Oh boy. Here we go. Take that. Take that one too. Guess that's everyone. Oh, nope, there was one more. Oh, there's another one. You learn something new every day. No, I don't want to play b-ball with you. I really did. I should have played b-ball with her. It would have been a lot better than shooting people in a mine. Well, they do take a chunk of your health off, don't they? Oh, and I found the exit. We just got out of the Kid Cuddy mine. <sighs> Mothlean says, I wish you would enjoy the mine level in Waxworks. She's been bugging me to play Waxworks. Just checking something real quick. Be back in the game in one moment. Un momento. Okay. Prepare thyself for more farms. Gonna put you down, doggy. Actually, cannot see the feed, so I do not know if I'm still streaming. I am. Excellent. People in the chat, say something so I know you're still alive. Since I should have five of you motherfuckers watching. Take a box! Love that box. Take a barrel! I overshot the barrel. I miss the barn, as they say here in Texas, or in the film Cat Baloo. Fuck, I haven't thought about the film Cat Baloo in a long time. I used to watch that all the time as a kid because it was like one of the five VHS tapes that we had. Remember when you could buy VHS tapes at McDonald's? Does anyone else remember that? I think they were... I want to say it was the Indiana Jones films. They were having some kind of weird promotion. We're like, you can now buy the Indiana Jones films on VHS at McDonald's when you get yourself a fucking nasty Harrison Ford meal. <laughs> the nasty... It's the nasty Ford meal deal is what they called it. Oh yeah, a diamond, of course. Sitting on top of a silo. That's how you make diamonds. You <laughs> to Stick a bunch of coal and a bunch of uh, a bunch of feed into a silo. I'm starting to lose my voice. Fuck you. 
I got a gun too. You're not special. Just because you're made of straw and I'm made of blood. And sinew. Okay, Moth just left the chat. She's out of the room. She said BRB. Everyone talk bad about her. So when she gets back, she thinks that's what we do all the time. Because it is. And I want her to have a realistic expectations of uh, what happens when she's gone. Hey, it's me, Dan Fortescue. I'm back, uh, coming back to PS4. Go ahead and pre-order my game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Where are you taking me? Into the woods! Get out of here. Trying to fucking pimp on my stream. I ain't no sellout. Yeah, fuck, fuck Radio Ethiopia. I'm Radio Brooklyn. I ain't no snob. Take that! Oh, fuck, you can sleep. I was just, I was doing that as a goof. Gotta have a glass of water next to your bed at all times for your dentures. Yes, people listening, I am that old. You are listening to the stream of a 96-year-old man. Gotta talk about dentures. Gotta talk about my Medicaid checks. Got a lot of fun topics. Uh, this is the attic from Gone Home, of course. This is the alternate end of Gone Home, where it turns out your lesbian sister was actually a lesbian witch. But, I mean, that's fine. Both are fine. I mean, we have religious liberties in this country and if you want to be a lesbian witch go right ahead join the military even which happens at the end of Gone Home I can't remember what happens in Gone Home I think the girl's going to join the military and then her girlfriend shows up and is like hey don't join the military. They don't like punk rock. And they're like, yeah, they don't. And then they form Sleater Kinney. <laughs> the end. No! My Sleater Kinney jokes were good, you foul beasts. Get out of here. I really liked Gone Home, by the way. I know, I know... It's been so long since that game came out that it, people have stopped talking about it. But like, I I teared up a bit. If if you haven't played Gone Home, sorry I ruined it for you just now during the stream. If you have played Gone Home, uh, in the chat or in the uh, uh, comment section, if you're watching this later, tell me about how you teared up. And if you say I didn't tear up while playing Gone Home, you're a goddamn liar. Don't lie to me. Don't you dare fucking lie to me. Don't you come on my fucking show and fucking lie to me. Because I'll fucking know. I also got the blue key, not the red key. But I'm talking directly in the microphone. So it's hard for me to look at the, s the screen. Okay, here we go. Blue key. Get out of my barn! You best be giving birth to baby Jesus in here if you want to stay in my barn for free. What you doing, my pots and pans? Oh, they're fighting! Fight! Fight! Who's gonna win? My money is on the right, because I, I hit the left one quite a bit. Oh, they switched sides on me. This is like a Tekken fight. They're using their ability to strafe. No, they're throwing fireballs, so it's not really a Tekken fight unless they're both playing as Akuma uh, from Tekken 6, of course. This is more like a Street Fighter EX3 fight. Which one of them is Doctrine Dark? Oh! They both lost. Who could have seen that one coming? Give me my candy corn prize pack, please. Look at this fucking goober. Appears to be a cult leader. So that's what Jason did when he left Real last save. He went on to be a cult leader. That's a joke. That's a gag. That's a goof. What Jason went on to do after Real last save is actually a lot more insidious. Take that. Take that.
dunk on him. Right in the frilly church hat. Oh, it's a Silence of the Lambs joke. But look who's down there. It's not the fat senator's daughter. It's fucking Yorick, our friend. They probably should get the main, the, the, the guy voice acting, kind of like Caleb in Blood. Fuck it, I'm jumping down there. That's right. That girl would have just scoped out her surroundings more. Instead of finding a bunch of fucking disembodied bloody fingernails, she would have maybe found a portal. It's her fault for not escaping. And she broke that poor dog's leg. That's the worst part of that movie. Is a dog gets hurt. I actually rewatched Silence of the Lambs uh, recently and Red Dragon. Red Dragon does not hold up. Silence of the Lambs, still a masterpiece. And watching Silence of the Lambs as an adult, you really realize some things you missed as a kid. Mostly what the film is about. I never put it together watching it as a kid that it is a film. It's kind of about... How do I put this? Um, it's 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 kind of an allegory for sexism about how men feel like they own women and their their feeling of ownership of women Th throughout the entire film. Oh, the Duke boys, Agent Starlin is just every single male character she is in contact with has some kind of creepy sexual like lust after her. And they even use like the, that kind of like in the cinematography, um, they really hammer that home. Uh, and even the, the killer, uh, he's, he's envious of women, but that is also, you know, coveting a woman. Um, you know, so each, each character, each male character in that film, you know, like you have, Hannibal Lecter, he even says, you know, ah, Clarice, if we keep meeting like this, people are going to say we're in love. And when he passes her the notes, uh, he, they, they close up really close on their, their hands. And you see him kind of like caress her hand with her, with his finger, which is a really th creepy thing men do <laughs> to chicks sometimes. It happens as the waitresses a lot. Um, but like Dr. Childers asks Clarice out when they first meet and she's really like, oh, I died. I was talking about films and feminism and the male gaze in cinema. I'm sorry, everyone. But no, like I didn't pick up on that as a kid. I just thought it was a creepy serial killer movie. I didn't realize there was this, this really prevalent theme of sexism, um, in the film and even Clarice's teacher the the person who kind of like puts her up to interviewing because she's not a full FBI agent in the film you got to remember that too she's she's a she's a trainee um even the guy who puts her up to meeting Hannibal uh Hannibal is the first person who kind of like hits upon the point where he thinks like you know are you two screwing and she's like no and he's like yeah but I bet he's still you know does it, there has to be a reason he kind of you know letting you have all these favors and shit Hannibal kind of hits on that you don't really see that until the end of the film yet again kind of uh, mirroring the handshake scene um, sorry mirroring the hand scene between Hannibal and Clarice where Hannibal hands her a bunch of documents and he kind of like caresses her hand with his finger while he does it and it's really creepy there's a handshake at the end of Silence of the Lambs and I think it's kind of showing Clarice reasserting her dominance to a man who's kind of treating her like a daughter, but then you kind of kind of pick up on the subtext of, no, he too is kind of also lusting after her. And the way she kind of shakes his hand, it's a very forceful handshake. I could be wrong. I could read the books and be like, oh shit, no, she sleeps with him. And that's what that was supposed to signify. You know, I never saw the film Hannibal because I heard it was such fucking garbage. But I don't know. I, I think the Silence of the Lambs... I also find it funny the one person that Clarice gets hit on who she doesn't, like, kind of, like, either A, is kind of, like, repulsed by, 
and B doesn't like completely shut down their efforts is the cross-eyed guy who's like the bug scientist. I thought that was kind of charming. It was, it was like, she kind of sees that the guy is harmless and he's also the most harmless about hitting on her. He just asked her to go out for burgers and a milkshake. Oh no, no, burgers and a, and a, and a wine. <laughs> burgers and a nice red wine, I think is what he asks her for. Shit, did I say Hannibal Burst? Someone just made a joke about Hannibal Burst in the Twitch chat, and I think I said Hannibal Burst instead of Hannibal Lecter. I want to remember that Hannibal Burst uh, bit about a passive burglar. <laughs> hey, you want to go back to my place for drinks and some food? Yes, I'd like to go back to your place for some drinks and some food. What kind of drinks are we talking about? What kind of food are we talking about? And do you expect me to sleep with you if I go to your place? Yeah, I expect you to sleep with me if you go to my place for drinks at 5 in the morning. You go to my house at 5 in the morning and eat my, eat my food and drink my drinks and don't sleep with me. That's a passive burglary. <laughs> no, but Red Dragon... Fails. If I'm if movie talk is boring you, please tell me to shut the fuck up. I, I'm much better on paper with this sort of stuff. Or I guess I should say I'm much better if I like write my statements down before I make them. But like if you watch Sansa Lambs again, you really do pick up on the kind of message it's going for. And and like kind of the trials and tribulations women have to go through in not just the professional environment, but in life. I mean Ultimately, I mean, it's a movie about a man killing women, but even like a, a strong woman like Clary Starling has to deal with a, a constant badgering and never quite feeling safe around men. I mean, really, let's be honest, the film kind of hits you in the face with his message when a dude throws sperm in Clarice's face. Let's not fucking forget about that. The, the fucking dude, like, throws fucking jizz in her face. And it's like, boom, there, that's the film. That's the message of the film. It's, it's being a woman in modern day and not feeling safe. Um, but Red Dragon fucking fails because it's a prequel. Now, I believe there was a film called Manhunter uh, that came out before Sansa Lambs. And I want to say Brian Cox was Hannibal Lecter in that. Well, they remade Manhunter, but after they made Sansa the Lamb, so of course, you know, um, Hannibal Lecter is played by Tony Hopkins, greatest actor of all time, maybe question mark on that, but he's up there. The Red Dragon fails because <sighs> like, the fucking end? One, it fails it fails on multiple levels. Like, Tony Hopkins returning as Hannibal Lecter, he's really good in it. He's He, he, he can't miss. Um, and I also think Ray Fiennes as the dragon. Do you see? This is her transform, do you see? He gives a really good performance. I can't remember the actress's name and I feel bad, but the um, the blind woman gives a really good performance. But our two of our main characters, Ed Norton and Harvey Keitel, they fucking sleepwalk their entire performance to that film. But there's a scene at the end of Red Dragon, it feels like a scene from a goddamn Avengers movie. Where the bad guy's been killed, the good guy, his family's safe, but he's irrevocably scarred, both physically and emotionally. Um, everything's been put in its place, and we cut to Hannibal Lecter, and Dr. Childers is removing all of his, his stuff from his cell to punish him. And he tells, you know, Hannibal... Oh, by the way, there's a young FBI agent here. Uh, she's too pretty, though, to be an FBI agent. She said she wanted to talk to you. Um, but I told her you're probably too busy. And Dr. Childers gets up to leave, and Hannibal shoots up and goes, What's her name? And then it cuts to black. And it's like, y Fuck you, you're not a fucking Avengers film. Don't fucking, like, Ooh, this is, this is when Sansa Lambs happens. I know that film. That's how the whole Red Dragon film feels. It fails at being its own thing, and it, it bars too much on, hey, look at me, I'm a prequel to Silence of the Lambs. So that's why I don't like the film Red Dragon anymore. I used to really like it when it first came out. Rewatching it, wow, it does not hold up. Where Silence of the Lambs is still a fucking masterpiece.
It's a fucking masterpiece of film. That ends film talk for now. The film talk will return. Be warned. I, I still have many opinions on movies. And film. They're different. Ever watch a movie so good that you feel bad calling it a movie? You have to call it a film. I feel that way with, um... Maybe there will be blood, which I've only seen twice, but I feel like that's enough to kind of like... Yeah, this is a masterpiece. Okay, I gotta fight them Duke boys again. Should I say them spook boys? Because they look like ghosts. I guess spoop is the word you people use now. Oh, it's so spoopy. I hate the word spoopy. Okay. Don't die this time, Chris. Don't talk about movies. You got the movie chat out of your system. Ladies and gentlemen. What do you think about Quentin Tarantino directing a Star Wars film? Ah, Star Trek film. Fuck, I did it. I fucked it up. Duke boys, I'm trying to talk about movies and you're distracting me. Okay. Shit. This ends now. Are there bullets homing? That's some old bullshit, Duke boys. Hit him with their own bullets. And our bullets will be homing. Oh, you're an only child now, Duke brother. Hey, I don't know why. Talking like Cotton Hill, I kill fit him in. Okay, your bullets should disappear when you disappear. Your bullet should disappear when you disappear. This is malarkey. It's chicanery. Woo! Them Duke boys is dead. And now a puzzle. They were unworthy. Okay. Get the health before going to the next level because I'm not a fucking idiot. I'm not a chump. The guy, he sounds like Echo from Tarantula, but like waking up at like four in the morning. They were unworthy. Hey man, I'm gonna put an egg in this avocado. It's gonna blow your mind. Mothlin says she doesn't see enough movies. You don't listen to good music either. Mothlin's obsessed with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and didn't know the dog Iggy was named after Iggy Pop. That's the one time I think I, I flew off the handle in our Discord when I learned that. At first I was like, oh, you've never you've never heard of Iggy Pop? Okay, we were talking about David Bowie, and I mentioned something about, man, isn't it weird that, that Iggy Pop has outlived Lou Reed and David Bowie? Like, you think maybe Lou, but not David. I mean, Iggy's done so many drugs. And she was like, I don't know who Iggy Pop is. And at first I was like, well, you're 20. You're a young thing. Oh, you pretty young things. I was trying to go for a joke there and it didn't work. Anyway, you're a young person. You don't... It's fine if you don't know who Iggy Pop is. I get that. But then she said, oh, is that why the dog in JoJo was named Iggy? And fucking my eyes literally turned red. There was <laughs> flames. Flames on the side of my face. I was like, that's right. You're obsessed with JoJo and you don't know why the dog is named Iggy? You have a show. The beat by beat, step by step, episode by episode, and if you read the manga, issue by issue, tells you what good music to listen to, and you haven't! You haven't listened to the music that Araki is telling you to! All the young dudes. Let's, let's listen to Moot the Hoople. Mot the Hoople. Whatever. Who gives a shit? I'm waiting for the chat to catch up see live reactions of me calling someone in the chat out for not knowing who Iggy Pop is. For not knowing who the street walking cheetah with a heart full of napalm is. Man, I'm gonna listen to Raw Power right now. That's my favorite Iggy and the Stooges song.
I think that yelling might have uh, been it for me for commentary, guys. I think I just blew a vocal cord. Well, I have not had the flu, because as I said, I am made of sterner stuff. Uh, still been a little under the weather, so my voice is not what it used to be. And you know what? No. Nope. Fuck that joke up. Try it again. Everyone, forget that last five seconds happened. My jo- my- boop! Take two. Or take three. Take four. My voice isn't what it once was. And you know what? It never was what it once was. Give me that red key. I just cloned I Claudius. I deserve a red key. By Joe, which is to say by myself. Uh oh, people in the chat are dunking on Moth, as they should at all times. I'm not gonna call her Moth anymore. I'm gonna call her by her real name. Hortons. I'm feeling a little lightheaded now. Oh no, I might be making good on my second promise. You might be listening to me catch the flu. Live, in person, on air. I used that red key to open a door and fight a scarecrow with a shotgun. We both have shotguns. Like, I, I, that's, that sentence is correct no matter where you put the comma. I am fighting him, comma, with a shotgun. No, I'm fighting a scarecrow, comma, with a shotgun. Or, I'm fighting a scarecrow with a shotgun. I don't have time to play with myself. I'm playing a computer game here, guys. No, I'm not. Computers are for losers. Uh, let's play Xbox. Merry Christmas, Xbox. Did I get anything? I just flip a switch. Oh. It's one of them crazy forests. Might as well have the forest in Dark Souls too. That's really weird. I really love Dark Souls 2. I know people don't like that one. They say it's the weakest in the trilogy. Uh, but I don't know. I, I fucking love Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 3 is real good, too. I really like Dark Souls 3 a lot. I know your game. As soon as my back's turned. You're gonna come to life and want my- Who's this hippopotamus-looking guy? He looks like a Moomin. Moomin troll. Got a job at the butcher shop. And then had a coronary. We were uh, buying Christmas presents and we were at Half Price Books and my mother pulled up a puzzle and she was like, hey, do you think your sister would like this? I'm like, I don't know, is she, is she a fan of Moomin? And it was a, a puzzle with all the Moomins on it. And she was like, what? It's like, it's a Moomin puzzle. Does she like Moomin? And she was like, Chris, stop making up words. And Andy walked over and he was like, oh, hey, Moomin. And she was so confused because she thought it was just oh, like a Lisa Frank, not Lisa Frank, but you know, like uh, like a non, I'm going to just gloss to the fact that I fucking killed a soldier for some reason. Go back to Call of Duty. This is a horror game. But like she thought it was like just a, a puzzle with weird creatures on it, you know, that didn't have anything to do with anything, you know, but no, it was a Moomin puzzle. We talked her out of it because it was like, I mean, if she doesn't even know what Moomins are, then that's kind of a weird gift to give people. Get out of here, soldiers. This is a horror game. I don't want to play no blue shift, but I do want a Tony Hawk fucking woo. Check that out. 
doing sick ollies on my rocket launcher. So here's where the tonal shift of this game kind of starts to happen. But I like it. I like it very much. Sorry, reading the chat real quick. Kokonoi says that guy who I called Moomin Troll uh, was the PUBG's fat cousin. PUBG man's fat cousin. He kind of does. He looks like he's in PUBG. I've actually never watched Moomin, but I know what a Moomin is. So, like, if someone, someone bought me a Moomin puzzle, if someone said... Hey, do you want this moving puzzle? I'd be like, ah, I've never, I've never actually watched or read or got into movements, but I'm aware of what a movement is. They're actually rebooting movement. Um, I believe Rich Iowade, and I'm gone. Rich Iowade and Matt Berry are going to be in the new movement. Uh, I think it's coming out in 2019. IMDb says. Mothlene is defending herself in the chat. Sorry, Hortense. Hortensia. Hortensia is defending herself in the chat because it's not fair for us to expect her to get a reference uh, that 30-year-olds get. That's her defense. Like, oh, I don't get the same references that 30-year-olds get. You're watching... You, you read a comic book that was written in the 80s, and you're obsessed with it. You think you'd do a base level of research. Like, Iggy, I know that's not a Japanese name. Maybe I should look up where these names are coming from. Get dunked on. Everyone else in the chat is your age or younger, and they fucking get the references. Listen to good music. Don't listen to that K-pop BS you listen to. Isn't that what the band is actually called? The Bullshit Crew or something? I don't know. She's obsessed with K-pop. I personally can't stand it. I, I, I like foreign music, but I just don't like boy bands regardless of nationality, I guess I should say. Listen to a lot of Japanese rap recently. Uh, I really, really like Grupa Noi. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And the, uh, the Japanese um, rock group, Frederick, is okay. Found this... Ooh, excuse me. Found this one uh, Japanese group called Sake Rock. And they are fucking great. It's... I don't know how to say what they are. They're like a... Uh, they, they sound like a high school band almost. They're, they're like... They're like Japanese ska, but the ska elements kind of sound more like klezmer music than traditional ska does. They're, they're a weird orchestral ensemble. Uh, very heavy on horns, but uh, I really like it. Sake Rock. They have a great music video uh, for a song, which name I can't remember, probably because I do not speak Japanese. Because I'm a racist. You're watching a racist person stream. He doesn't know a language. He's a bad person. People in the chat, talk about stuff other than what, what, what Hortensia is talking about right now, because she's just throwing a temper tantrum, because I call her out. She's trying to convince me that the K-pop band she likes, they, they also rap. They are also rappers. I'm, you know, I could rap right now, and I would also be a rapper. That doesn't mean I'm good. Ah, rats. Rats in the front. Uh, French? 
Rats in the front room, roaches in the back, junkies in the alley with a baseball bat. See, I just rapped, so I'm also a rapper. Where's my fucking... Where's my fucking groupies who come onto Chris's stream and ruin it. These- the fucking soldiers are like tissue paper men. You kill them in one hit. That's an unfortunate door placement. That is not safe. I know this is a crazy haunted murder city, but I mean, at one point, I want to think it's inhabited by regular people. You wouldn't just have a door with no railing to just, it's the death drop door. Okay, I got the yellow key. Take that. Taste the pain. Take that. Taste the pain. My book now. I'm keeping it. Hey. Hey, you guys. You want a book? There you go. Oh, no. Knowledge is power. We have to make sure it doesn't fall in the wrong hands. Kids shouldn't be taught how to read. It's too dangerous. Where the hell was that yellow door? Was it down here? Yellow light, yellow door. Is that how it works? There's acid. I know that's down here. Oh, wow. It is. Thank you. Ambient lighting saved the day. Oh, fuck. Ah, fuck. Come on, guys. Ganging up on me? 1v1 me. 1v1 me, you cowards. Give me that sweet treasure. What the? <laughs> What's the point of this room over here? I just don't know. The dangerous kitchen. If it's not one thing, it's another. Oh, my headphones make my glasses crooked. My headphones make my glasses crooked. Who's hitting me? Oh, it's the... <laughs> He's just having a fun time. Oh, not anymore. I feel bad now. I'll take a bath. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. Technology. Let that happen. Whoa! Oh, and I died. So readjust myself here. And I mean my glasses. I'm not crotchily adjusting anything. The old haunted gas station. Uh, there is a save and load function in this game. However, there's not a quick save and quick load function, which I think games like this desperately need, hopefully in a new patch. If, if there is a quick save and quick load, it's not to F5, F6, which I, I normally associate with quick saving. I should probably, I'm gonna check and see if there's quick saving because I'd hate to lie. Bindings, oh yeah, daddy, tie me down. Holster? Don't tell me you can put your weapons away and walk through the town and no one will mess with you. It's like fucking oblivion. Okay, it's F6 and F9. Those are the quick save buttons. Game, I would like to apologize to you for not knowing what buttons quick saving was. In my defense, it should be F5. That's what Brock Lesnar would have chosen if he made this game. Yeah. 
Okay, I believe this is the crazy door to nowhere. Whoop, broke my ankle. Follow the yellow light. Boom, quick save. Because I got that button now. We have that technology. Flash line. Oh, I thought I could dodge that and I didn't. Fucking rats. Say hi to Rizzo for me in hell, you bastard. Take that. Taste the pain. Ooh, boy. Two for one. It's a twofer for doofer. Take that. And I'm gonna kill you guys. Is my bouncy boy down there? Where's my bouncy boy? You're not my bouncy boy. You're a green thing. Whoa. Goodbye to Peter Pumpkinhead. Okay. I only have 44 health. Can I make this work? <sighs> Gonna go right for the power up. Here we go. I missed the power up. I'm too scared. I'm too scared. They got to me. These motherfuckers are taking mortars to the face like champs. They're treating them like they're fucking dodgeballs. We'll dodge this. And they got me. Damn it. So close. Okay, here we go. Try this again. I hate you guys. Give me that health. Yeah, sucker. Oh, I unlocked more friends. Okay. Dang it. Yeah, splatter you some bitches. And even more. I, I, every wall in this structure is just gonna, you know, come down, revealing more and more enemies until finally I'm in a field facing the goddamn Viet Cong army. Okay. Fuck off. Forever. Get out of my fucking head. Get out of my face. Chainsaw Boy, you're cool. I killed you on accident. I'm sorry. I was actually going to try and recruit you to my team. I feel bad about that. Okay, definitely quick save. Boom. After this. Okay. We need to find another door with a blue outline. Because we got a blue key. Hey, guys. What you doing here? Fixing up a car? That's cool. That's cool. Kind of a gearhead myself. Take this hammer. He didn't like it. Let's get out of here. Fuck off. No. I'm done playing your game. Which is to say dusk. Because I exited the level. Ah, uh, yes. One of the three levels that must be in every video game. The sewer level. Next up, we're going to go to a abandoned insane asylum and then a school. And what 
almost think it's real fucked up that fucking Silent Hill had a sewer level. Like, the whole game turns into, like, a weird, like, industrial nightmare. Having an actual sewer just kind of seems like overkill. Like, if you're in a fucking sewer and the Silent Hill creepy time kind of happens. Other than the klaxon, how do you fucking tell? Okay. One big complaint with this game, we don't really need these type of puzzles. In our shooty games. I shoot my puzzles. I don't, I don't give a fuck. There we go. Process of elimination. Try to take it check, check it again. Process of elimination. I need to have better diction if I Who are these guys? Potato headed scientists? Get out of here, you mutants. You spud boys? We gotta we gotta give these bad guys some names. People in the chat, people in the comment section. It's time for us to name the bad guys in dusk. These guys are spud boys. Because of their baked potato heads. This is Dr. Spudman. And this is his lab assistant, Spudman Jr. These are, uh... They're gas geezers. Because they got a little gas mask on. Oh, hold on. What did we create? Dusk. It's a game, uh, 1999 on Steam. I thoroughly enjoy it, so you should be proud that you created Dusk. Check this out. There's something in there, so I'm gonna put some barrels in front of it. Let's go trip on the barrels. Oh no, it's a it's a fucking flaming horse with a skull for a head. Why would you create that? That makes no sense. It serves no purpose. It's not the ultimate weapon. It's it's not gonna inc increase your knowledge of the universe. Like every monster a scientist makes, like even in Oh, what's it called? That that movie where the, the, the dude builds the computerized house that abducts his wife. Like, even that he was like, I've built this computer that can can give anyone whatever they need at the touch of the fingers. Uh, the new future in electronics, and then it turns evil. What no scientist says, I'm gonna make a dead horse with a flaming head. That that'll win me a a goddamn Nobel. Fucking weak ass shit too. Fucking autosave. Um, oh, there's a second horse! Why would you make two? And you didn't improve upon the first one, either. Is my big beef with the flaming horse. Like, if you're doing multiple experiments, you'd be like, Oh, what did we learn from the first flaming horse? Uh, maybe don't make a flaming horse? What the hell is that movie called? Where the dude... Makes a automated house that abducts his wife and makes her have a baby. And then the baby is their dead kid, but it has the brain of the house. And beef from... Beef from Fan of the Paradise is in it. He gets crushed by a Rubik's Cube snake. This movie exists. I'm not, I'm not funning with you people in the chat. Uh, Ponch is going to bed. He's not going to see. We're almost done. I'm going to look up the name of that movie real quick because this is Chris Vaughn's movie chat. Demon Seed. The house that kidnaps a woman is named Proteus and is from the film Demon Seed. <coughs> oh, first cough of the flu. I got it. I made you a promise that I would get the flu by the end of the stream. I keep my words and my bonds in a shoebox. Underneath the bed. 
This has been gibberish. Thank you for listening to my gibberish. Ladies and gentlemen, I might just have to fucking restart this level. I might have made a mistake quick saving. Okay, that's out of... Okay, that has 50 shots. I'm a smart man. I'm a genius. No, no, shit. No, I'm not a genius. I'm a fuck up. I'm a screw up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The game knew what I was doing. York, you can fucking help me out, please. Just sit right there. Daddy's gonna lay some traps, and you're gonna be good for daddy. Daddy's gonna kill himself, because daddy is a moron. Go to bed, York. Like that! That didn't really do that much. Oh, he kills me as soon as he comes out. Fuck. Can I snipe the door open? Shit, 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 shit. Get up those stairs, get up those stairs, come on. It's a horse, it's a horse, it's a horse, 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 horse. Come on, come on, die, 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 die. Not me, the horse though. Let the horse die. Let me live forever. No! I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Lord and Savior. Thus I will live forever. That's what the Bible says. Technically. This guy's really bumming me out. He's just too quick. And the thing is, I think when you do a quick save, you lose the ability to just restart the level. And if I do level select... Oh wait, can I just run away? I think I can just run away. I'm gonna dilly of a pickle here. But I think I can just book it. Goodbye! This is only the I did it! I ran away! Hooray! You could just run away and avoid the second horse altogether! Huzzah for cowardice! The meat hook wounds in your back still throb as you make your way down the cold, black and bloody hallways that once held those monstrous creations, one of which you totally fucking dunked on by running away, making him look like an asshole. You leave the ruined town of dusk behind, littered with the corpses of the possessed, hoping never to return. In the distance, an imposing silhouette of what appears to be a military facilities. But why? A dark voice pushes you forward. Do you truly seek answers? Or is it simply too late to turn back? Continue the dust experience in episode two, The Facilities. And yes, I'm aware that I fucked up the third sentence because I'm basically an illiterate. You're watching a stream put on by someone who's illiterate. How does that make you feel? I have to read every book with a bookmark, because if I look at a wall of text, I get lost. You know, we do that thing where you hold a bookmark and you hold it underneath each line and you go down. I really have to do that because I'm fucking illiterate, y'all. I'm a Texan. That was dust. That was episode one. I think we had one hell of a time with that game. Only two people are left watching. Everyone else has gone to bed. It's 10.30 here. It's probably fucking 7 a.m. where they are. Who gives a shit? That's what I'm telling myself to feel bad about my low view numbers. Doesn't matter, though, because 2018, like the Captain Beefheart album, I'm going to do what I want. And you know what? Tonight, dusk is what I wanted to do. 
So thank you for watching the stream, everyone. Uh, if you want to support this uh, channel, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube, the best way to do that is by going to patreon.com slash reload last save. If you give $5, you can join our Discord. That's where most of the cool shit goes down, I'm going to be honest. Last month was really cool. We had multiple movie watching nights. We had a night where we just shit post YouTube videos and watch them together as a group. So the Reload Last Save Discord, it's $5 a month, but we got our game nights, we got our movie nights. Uh, we're pushing forward with Goblin Projects this year where we're gonna try and do more stuff with the community and push other people in the community's projects that they're working on. So, you know, bringing a little spotlight to other people's streams and stuff. And it's just really fun to talk about anime and uh, shit post on each other and rip into each other. Uh, I lied when I said it's fun to talk about anime because someone talks about one specific anime and everyone tells them to shut up. Because anime is garbage. I don't know if you knew this. Anything past 1991 is garbage. Like, if, if you want to watch, like, fucking Yurusa Yatsuru or if you want to watch um, Zabungo. <laughs> Sabungo. Uh, you know, you come to my house, we put that shit on. But you want to watch Tenchi Muyo? Get the fuck out of my house. Get out of here, you rap scallion. So yeah, patreon.com. Uh, please subscribe. Donate if you can. All the money goes towards our future projects. And if you want to watch the majority of our videos, that's our YouTube channel. There's a link below. Um, unless you're watching this on YouTube, then I'm telling you to go to the channel you're already on. But our YouTube channel is Scum of the Earth with two M's. So, S-C-U-M-M-O-F-T-H-E-E-A-R-T-H. I did it even though I'm an illiterate. Scum of the Earth with two M's is our YouTube channel. Or just reloadlesssave.com. Honestly, I'll take you right to it. I should have said that instead. Thank you for watching my stream. I love you all. Welcome to 2018, the year where Chris just does whatever he fucking feels like. Because I got a job working for a much more popular YouTube channel. <laughs> so my personal channel is just bullshit now. I love you all. Mwah. Good night.